mission. This is indeed a good and glorious day, a day in which we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I invite you to take a breath then and know that you have entered into the presence of the Lord. And for our Christmas Eve worship, we're we're going to try something... uh, going to try something new, and that is that our first prelude piece was pre-recorded by our our handbell choir, and so now we're actually going to go from a live stream to a pre-recording, but hopefully you shouldn't experience that any differently as you're listening or watching along. Thank you for that. Now we're going to have a second prelude. Uh, Last night uh, in our outdoor service, we had a young violinist who played and discovered that in uh, 30 degree weather, fingers are a little bit tighter. And so she would like to offer this again for our worship and celebration of Christmas this morning in a room that is no longer slightly above freezing. Whether you are at home or uh, here in the sanctuary helping us, I would invite you to rise for our first hymn, which is O Come All Ye Faithful. And this is on page 283 in your uh, Cranberry Hymnals. Oh. 
our Christmas greeting. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have beheld Christ's glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. May the grace and truth of Christ be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, The first reading, the people who walk from Isaiah, oh my gosh, I forgot my glasses down there, I'm sorry. Uh, do you want, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had them the whole time. Okay, from Isaiah 9, two through seven. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. 
for all the boots of tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this point, we're going to continue with another uh, pre-recorded video, and this is of our children's chimes playing still, still, still. written by Paul to Titus 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first census that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of ba David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be enrolled with Mary, who, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger 
because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This shall be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the shepherds had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to pray with me. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week, there was a headline in the Lancaster paper, and it was about this cyber attack. And the subheadline said, but the full extent of damage is unknown. And I sighed as I read this. And I, and I sighed and I even grimaced, not because I was so concerned about the particularities of the cyber attack, but I found it to be just one more of an endless series of headlines this year that didn't just tell us how bad things were, but told us that it could even be worse. In so many ways, 2020 has been a year of fear. Fear of the COVID virus, fear of people being too close to us, fear of going to the grocery store, fear of economic downturn, fear of turmoil in our streets, fear of political consequences in our nation, fear of mutations in the virus. The list goes on and on and on. There have been a relentless stream of headlines on our screens, on our phones, in our papers, telling us to be afraid. And, and so we've just eaten this diet of fear. And, and after a year, we realize that at the best, we're numb to it. And at the worst, we realize it's toxic, draining us away taking our vitality and our hope. And so I bring you the words of the angel. I bring you the words of the angel to the shepherd that are also for you this day, and that is do not be afraid. These are the words of the angel to the shepherds, and they are the words to us this day. Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy that shall be for all of the people. Again, the angel says, no, 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 do not be afraid this day, for I bring you good news of great joy for all of the people. We are all hungry for a word, for good news, for a word of joy even. And I think this Christmas we have sought to find this joy, to find a message that was not of fear. And sometimes we have sought this in the past, recalling Christmases long, long ago with many beautiful memories. But unfortunately, when we dwell on the past, we inevitably come to a bittersweet moment where we realize the past is no longer the present and that it is not this year the way we would like it to be. And our loved ones we suddenly miss upon reflecting on the past. So the, the past is not the path to joy. But maybe then we consider the future. And this year we certainly have high hopes for 2021. I think many of us wrote off 2020 a long time ago, but we have said, no, no, 2021, that, that's going to be better. And it will be. <laughs> 
But we all know that much of what's happened in our world this year is going to carry over next year. And so we quickly discover that if we want to find joy in the future, there's, there's cause for concern there as well. That's not simply where joy is to be found. No, the shepherds give us some guidance today on how to find the joy that we seek, how to finally turn off the bad news, the fear news that is unrelenting. And they say, this day to you is born a Savior. This day. They call us, the angels, their proclamation calls us to the moment, to the now, here and now, to this day, to Christmas Day. And the angel says to the shepherds, you are to go and you shall find a sign and it shall be a baby. The joy of Christmas is when we move our reflection away from the past, away from the present, sorry, away from the future and to the present and to the Christ child. And there is something really beautiful about a newborn. And there's something precious about imagining what it was like for the shepherds, for Mary and Joseph, for that, those first moments of Jesus' life. Again, there's something so miraculous about a young child. You know, when the, the little, their whole hand can, can fit, can barely even fit around your pinky. And you know, the, the skin and the hair on a newborn, it's different. It's different for those first couple hours in that first day. And there's just something so miraculous, so, so precious in, in a newborn. And, and this day we're invited to, to ponder and to dwell with the shepherds and, and be amazed by the wonder of this child, baby Jesus, of the Christ child. Again, there's a joy that comes in just considering the miracle of a baby. If I have ever visited parents on the first day when their child is born, there's this glow that parents have. Literally, love is in the room. And uh, they don't know at all what they've gotten themselves into. They just simply are just elated that there's a child. But if I've ever visited parents on the third day or the fourth day after they have had a child, they have this look in their eyes that says to me, Pastor, why has the human race continued? This is so much work. And I am so tired. And you look at them and say, you're going to be this tired for months on end. But no, out of compassion, you, you affirm them that this too shall be okay. Turns out that children are a lot of work, especially babies. And so there's something profound that, that Jesus, God's son, comes to us as a baby. For you see, the angel's proclamation also declares that this isn't simply a child wrapped in cloths, but this is the Lord. And the word Lord here doesn't simply just mean master of the house or of the manor or of the estate. The word Lord here from the angel to the shepherds meant God, the God of Israel. And so here we have God beyond all human comprehension who can unfurl the skies with ranks of angels who sing cosmic and celestial praise, chooses somehow to be born as an infant. And again, there's, there's something mysterious and, and wonderful about this. But there's also something so perplexing that, that God chooses to be born as a child and a child who has desperate needs. Human children are weak. We have no capacity for self-sufficiency for years. At this point, the baby Jesus is totally dependent on Mary and Joseph for food, for warmth, for comfort, for shelter, for love. In all of the Greco-Roman myths, whenever the gods come in human form, they come as, as avengers or to sort of take and plunder what they want. But instead, God chooses to come as a baby who's fully dependent on at least two other people, if not countless more. And this is a strange revelation that, that causes me great joy that God chooses to enter this world dependent, dependent on us as humans. And the great joy that I find in this is that as God enters human history in Jesus Christ, that God also invites us into God's story. And that this, this new chapter in, in human history that's about the love of Jesus Christ is also then about our love 
towards each other. And that God is, is declaring that God has a part for you to play in this whole drama. Again, there's a great and sublime joy in knowing that God needs you. The gifts and talents and skills that God has given to you, just like God gave talents and gifts to Mary and to Joseph, God has called you into this, co-opted you into this act of love. And I think on Christmas Day, we're especially then reminded of the call, the duty, and the joy that we have then to love the next generation who are totally dependent. And the beautiful thing about this story is that whether it's Mary and it's your own biological child or Joseph, a child to whom God has entrusted to you, again, we have this sacred joy and obligation of loving and passing on faith and hope to the next generation. And it just struck me, too, as I thought about this church and how, how much of our ministry here is dedicated to, to raising the next generation. This week I saw Deacon Emily with, with children from the the Early Learning Center here in a chapel. I think every day about 100 kids come in here and entrust us to their care. I think about the ministries that we support through our charity power packs, the refugee children in Lancaster, or the fact we have a wood shop at this church that makes toys for children. I think about our Sunday school and all the stuff we've done during Advent and so forth. Again, there's a way in which it is a joy to know that we have a part a part to play in the raising and loving of the next generation, for God chooses to come among us as a child. But I want to be careful, lest I, lest I totally uh, miss the mark or we're totally misunderstood here. Christmas finally isn't that God depends on us to save the world. God depends on us to love each other each day but the angel makes a proclamation that, that finally God has chosen to, to take a new step in the salvation of the world, to take matters literally into his own hands, his hands that will be stretched out on a cross. No, for you was born a Savior. For you see, as, as humans, unfortunately, this, this thing called fear, it's not just 2020, but, but fear is always creeping into our hearts and bringing out cruelty and the worst things in us. And this has plagued us as a human species. And God knows it's going to take more than a lecture, more than an inspiration, more than a commissioning to get rid of the fear that plagues the human heart. It will take a Savior who will bring about a new creation, a world in which there is no more need for fear. So my, my prayer is, is that for us this Christmas that in a world that, again, is plagued by news of fear, we might dwell in and focus on the good news. The good news that, that there's a child who's born and that this child is one who will save the world ultimately. And until that salvation is full, God is with us, uniting us in Christ's love to love each other. And certainly this day we remember to love the next generation and the children. And so I proclaim to you what was proclaimed to the shepherds so long ago. Good news of great joy for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Yeah. 
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, on he the suffered death, death and was buried. On, on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the good news of Christ's birth and dwelling in hope, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Holy God, our brothers and sisters in faith have gathered all around the world to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We pray for the church, 
around the world, that we may be united through the good news of great joy that is for all people. We especially uplift our companion congregation, Kanga Lutheran. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you sent your Son into this world as the Prince of Peace. Our world is broken by conflict and strife. We pray for people, especially for children, who live surrounded by violence and war. Guide all in positions of authority to lead with equity and give courage to advocates who speak for the voiceless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, you gather us together in community. This year, distanced yet connected, blessing us with friends and family. You bless us this night with your revealed glory in the birth of your Son among us. Stir our thoughts to dwell on your message of peace, joy, and love with those we are near and those who are far. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, you sent your Son to heal a broken world through his forgiveness and mercy. We pray for those in need of healing. We pray for those in the world that are on our hearts and those we name aloud to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, you show your love and faithfulness in every generation. Through the witness of our ancestors in the faith, you have shown us how to testify to your grace and truth. We thank you for those who have shared this good news with us of Jesus Christ and of his birth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the prayers of your people, glorious God, for the sake of the one who took on our nature and form to redeem the whole world, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Announcements, uh, just real briefly. Last night was awesome. I thank everyone who was able to help make that work 24 hours ahead of uh, when we had originally planned on doing it. Uh, the, the rumor on the street is that people want to do this again uh, next year, but I'm not making any promises about 2021. I'll just say it was really, really great. So thank you for that. Thank you also to those who are helping out uh, today. Uh, this uh, Christmas break for the 12 days of Christmas and up till January 6th, we're going to have a Christmas walk in front of our church on Orange Street. And uh, I invite you to just t take a stroll there and, uh, again, then focus on Christ and uh, his coming among us. Lastly, I thank everybody for your generous contributions this last year. If you would like to still make an end-of-the-year gift to St. Paul, you can do that online. Also, we have a drop box that's right outside the church office doors, and uh, you can just uh, put it in that drop box, and we will then uh, take that inside. But again, uh, I thank you for your generosity throughout the year that has allowed us to continue in mission and in ministry. And so I invite us to pray. Dearest Jesus, as we gather this Christmas Eve, we are reminded that you are God's gift to the world. Bless the gifts we present that the ministry of this church may glorify your name and serve the world you love. Amen.
We continue with the reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, he who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word of God became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Receive this blessing. May the word that Mary brought to birth carry you into new and abundant life. Amen. May the word that Joseph cradled in his arms enfold you with love and strength. Amen. May the word that angels proclaimed in song bring harmony to our world. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. With you and all 
also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you do this, as often as we do this, we confess the great mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And in that great hope, we pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. continue with the distribution of communion and for those outside we'll be with you momentarily and if you have been watching along and would like to come or listening would like to come to the sanctuary we'll be ready to give communion for a, a little bit now uh, each week we're going to continue at least for the next uh, 
two or three Sundays, with the 8 a.m., 8.15 just being broadcast, and the 10.45 having um, communion after worship available in the parking lot. I thank you for worshiping with us this day. And again, hear the good news that to you this day is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen.